From this video, you're going to be learning the following typical themes of the Jabava London. How to get a free win versus the two knights, how to punish the kingside fianchero with the Austrian attack, and one of the most important themes for the whole opening, how to develop the initiative after knight b5 and black plays knight a6. We get a white pieces and we're going to be going for the, uh, yeah, Jabava London, playing knight c3 and then uh, bishop to f4. We see knight c6, so even in like 1300s, we're gonna be getting this insta wins with knight b5. This is kind of crazy, isn't it? No way to defend c7. Again, like really well known if you have watched like the previous episodes of the Jabava speedrun. We've got into this a ton. I like to take with a pawn. I'm, I think it's like slightly better than taking with a bishop. I haven't really analyzed this position in like great depth. Thing is like also for me from like a positional perspective allowing knight to take bishop is kind of what makes me want to take with a pawn even though in this line after knight h5 he does manage to get the bishop because I'm forced to play e3. This is like best move. Defending the bishop and hitting his knight and we do end up yeah just being up with a free pawn. Bishop b4 check, just play c3, and yeah, if he plays by the way to like c5, we have queen d5, I think, but I think he'll play bishop a5. So what is actually playing bishop c5? Uh, yeah, this is like really funny, because now we can actually deliver the main trap. We get to take on d5, and we have this really cute fork with knight c7, winning back the queen, sort of the star motive of the line. He can try to avoid queen trade with queen e7. But then we can actually take on c7, deflecting the queen and then winning the bishop. So that's why we're just collecting another pawn. <laughs> so I guess this is just like really annoying. Okay, so he just goes for the queen, but now we, yeah, win it back with a knight. We're up two pawns. We're like completely winning position. Pardon, we, we're actually up three pawns. So almost a piece at this point. <laughs> Problem for my opponent is really that he's struggling to coordinate and we can castle and huge fear of taking and delivering a lot of like nasty discoveries. Like in e6, we've got even bishop c4 like as a super annoying move playing for some kind of a checkmate. Yeah, we're just gonna do that. Uh, I guess this is a threat of almost mate because he's got e7, I forgot about that. But I mean, we can just like take a lot of stuff. He goes there, but like simplest to just take with a check and mm, yeah, pardon me if I missed mate, but <laughs> I'm just going to go for like the easiest continuation, just like taking with check. And the idea is after he takes, we take back and we are up a piece with uh, no counterplay for the opponent. So that is just uh, how you get free wins against uh, 1300 rated players. And we also do see the resignation, which is nice. You know, playing d4 and uh, just knight c3, bishop to f4. Okay, so we do see g6. Now, the question. I think we're just going to be playing e4. I guess we're going to be transposing back to the pirk. And I think I'm just going to be playing my own just about course where I'm dealing with the yeah, pirk. And I'm recommending the Austrian attack. So I guess we're just going to do that. Not only for like marketing purposes, but because I think it's one of the best ways of dealing with the uh, with a perk slash modern, and yeah, just gonna be going for this. F four is the starting position for the Austrian attack. If you're not familiar with this, and yeah, like after knight three, main move is to castle. C five is also super popular. There I have like a very fresh recommendation with like D C and then. Uh, like queen d3 and an end game. I don't really want to go into like too much detail on that, but um, that's like really nice. Maybe we're gonna get it in the series, who knows? I'm gonna play the line if we get it there. So I guess bishop g4, I think what it's important to know is that if I play the most natural thing, I think he's gonna do knight e6 and e5, but I think that's actually what I'm looking for. So let's see. My memory might be a bit rusty, also playing bishop e3 and taking with a g pawn, I think it's fine. But I think this might be like an old Fisher game, like Fisher against something. I forgot what it was. 
when like the guy plays knight c6 e5 he takes with a deep pawn and then he plays f5 and then there's like typical rook f6 motif that you see in the books and in puzzle rush but yeah fisher bank i think maybe it's the game i actually have that as a model game in my in my chessable course but i really forgot who was playing with a black piece i think it should be banco though and i think both are fine but i like taking with a deep one this is also like kind of a common theme of my course trying to play more of like a positional approach and playing against this bishop there's obviously this idea of taking the free pawn he's got like rook b8 uh thing on b2 though which might be a bit annoying although i've noticed like a funny tactic i think we're gonna go for that hope we can get into like rook b8 rook b2 i have a really nice one to show you okay so queen c6 was the idea keeping an eye on the knight he can take the free pawn but then i think we're gonna be having a powerful move i hope he takes really hoping he takes plays queen c8 but it's just like running into bishop a6 he kind of felt the danger like point was uh if he had taken on b2 i wanted to like castle long hitting the rook and also hitting the knight with like a win but okay in queen c8 we've got this one like forcing queen back to d8 and then we'll like do the same like, castle and free win too bad we did not get into the castle motif would have been like really nice i think but okay that's just fine too there's like only move save queen but like castle and then through d7 there's no way to stop that and yep what can i say the ocean is like really powerful not only in the main lines but especially when they try to do some kind of weird sideline you're just like completely crushing with the austrian i mean just look at this we're not even on like move 15 and this is like completely resignable he goes for the rook sack I guess only try, but can just take it. Queen b8 and just like queen b7, forcing queens off and we're like upper rook. So, okay. Just taking upper rook in the end game. We've got good chances of winning this one, I think. Kind of cute. We do get paired against the 1233. And we're just going to be going for the Jabal and then see whether we can get into some main lines, trap them with a quick bishop f4, knight b5 stuff. When I play z6, uh, I'm actually like not sure what Hans is giving it his course against this. I forgot to check this particular line. Thing is, we can play e4 and uh, yeah, just transpose into the French. I have played that pretty much my whole life as white. Well but i think just trying to keep it more of like jabava london territory i'm gonna be playing bishop f4 so i'm just gonna be going for this setup with e3 i think and then he plays with d5 gonna be going knight b5 i think we're getting in something that is more like jabava london uh yeah theme <laughs> and playing knight f3 and I like really try to understand what is going on with this thing where we uh, get a knight into b5. It looks like, you know, we're forcing him to play knight a6 and then he's forcing us back. It looks like we're losing a tempo and then he manages to like read out the knight playing knight c7. Uh, by the way, knight c7 is the most popular move in the position because white is actually threatening to eliminate the knight in like a lot of these positions. So they play knight c7 and uh, yeah, I've actually asked myself, well, what is like the issue with uh, black's setup? And the answer pretty much was that, well, we get a super solid knight on e5 and then we have very easy moves such as bishop d3, queen f3, castling long, followed by h4 and g4. So I'll just try to, yeah, get into these lines and... Uh, the general feeling is that we get a lot of play on the uh, king side. Uh, perhaps bishop d3 was not supposed to be included. Maybe just start with queen f3. Now that I'm like actually thinking about it, I might have made a pretty big mistake going there because he gets into c5. But I think we'll take and then I'm not sure he's like ready to open up the position because... I think, first of all, plan with queen f3 is still viable. And then also we could switch to like the short castle stuff. I'm actually like not familiar with the c5 idea. I guess we're going to be checking it after the game. This will be playing uh, queen f3. 
He's playing 98. I did to play like 96, I think. Trying to like maneuver that knight. We could still cast along. The only thing that's kind of bothering me is something like bishop to b4. And I don't see like an easy way to defend that knight. Yeah, I could also start like g4, g5 going for it immediately. I think that looks kind of fun. Uh, I think it's like really in the spirit of the uh, Jobava London. Okay, opponent plays d4. Just some like really bold moves by my opponent. Um, can we go for like the little trap? I think we can go for like the little trappy here. I could also like castle. We can castle maybe. Like DC, I want bishop h7 obviously. I think castling is perhaps maybe a good move. I'm like not entirely sure and um, can actually just like take on d4, could also play knight c4, throw that move in. Knight c4 might be better because then I'm kind of struggling to find a square for his queen. Like maybe queen a6, but do you really want to put the queen on a6? I don't know what to say about that. It'll be like knight d6 at least. Obviously the easy way to deal with this is just take and take on h7. Upper free pawn, he's kind of busted, so... I think you're gonna go for that. He's also like really struggling to develop. Knight c4 is still uh, pretty much an annoying move. He's playing knight f6. I'm considering g5. Maybe he wants to take with a knight. Um, I can play knight c4. He's got like queen c5, but maybe we can just like double up. Yeah, hitting the queen, queen c5, counterattacking, can bring the rook, and now this is a uh, big threat. And after bishop d7, you shouldn't really like take, because the knight on c4 will drop at the end of the line. Also, g5 doesn't help, because there's just knight takes. Uh, that would have been an idea to like deflect the knight and then take the bishop. But it's not great here, and simply it's just like bishop d6, collect the exchange, and uh, I think he's starting to look uh, yeah better and better. Queen c6, just like really much go for the trade. Uh, okay, he's got this check that I've actually forgot about. Not like it should really help his position uh, that much. I think I'm just play king b1 and then bishop c6, queen g3, and then his queen is getting run down by the pawns. Plays rook c8, which is maybe like a bit better. Now we have an idea of an idea of knight e5. Thing is, I don't really want to like take his bishop. I think I'm just going to be using this move anyways. With the idea to play h4 and just harass his queen. I think h4 is like the next move pretty much against anything as far as I can see even if he plays b5 I might be going uh, h4 so yeah just looking forward to that bishop c6 same h4 motif queen's like forced to go back either h6 or uh, g6 and then I think the queen is like pretty vulnerable there like queen g6 there's knight e5 among other things and Queen h6, there will be a fork with g5, and I think we're just winning a piece if I'm not like missing anything again. Uh, he goes queen a5, but that is like a bit of a bonus gambit, and uh, yeah, he just actually take the free queen, and that should be game. And we do get the designation. Gonna be going uh, for the job of a London. Yeah, looks like. Uh, we might be getting into some uh, some main lines and e6 is like a super popular move gonna be going knight b5 putting pressure on c7 black's main thing is to go bishop b4 check a5 but i think like a lot of people just play knight e6 in this position and uh, that is exactly what we have in this game and just gonna be playing knight f3 i think i might have messed up the move order a bit again uh, i keep doing that it's kind of weird I think I was supposed to start with e3, but might end up being the same thing. So just defending the knight this way. 
I think maybe knight e3 is fine as well. e3 I think is like a bit more precise. So we can have uh, this position after c6, knight c3, and we're like threatening to, to take. Yeah. Okay, so it goes knight h5. I think the common reply to this should be mm, bishop e5. And then like f6 gets played. We have g4 staff, among other things, like pawn takes. Could also take with a knight and play g5, that is correct. I think we're gonna go for that. Maybe I've seen this at some point, I'm just like not sure. Yeah, he goes f6, I think g4 now. And I think the idea is to like sack the piece with a knight. Yeah, and then like knight of six g5. This might be actually somewhere in Hans Niemann's course, but uh, wouldn't be the first time <laughs> my memory left me. So yeah, the idea is to like sack the piece and play g5, with, like huge initiative. Just g5. Thing is, he can't really play knight e4, which would be thematic because of queen h5 check and g6. I think there's knight takes with a winning position. So I think we're gonna see exactly that. I don't think we have time for queen f3, queen f7 because of knight g5 or something. Also maybe this is not as clear as I thought because after g6, knight g6, he could have some kind of queen g5 forcing queens off. Then we trade, take on h8, he's got like bishop g7. He's like trapping that piece, which I don't like. Do we have time to play this kind of h4 move? Same threat. I don't think we have the time. Again, like if you're playing this line, you should pretty much know it by heart. If you're going for the Super Bowl sack. I don't really know this by heart, as you can tell. Trying to figure it out over the board, which is not like the best strategy ever. <laughs> So let's have a look on that line again. So we go for the check. We take. First of all, you can also take, but then I have a feeling we take the rook with attack, like queen g6, king e7. Looks dangerous, but again, I'm not seeing my follow-up there either. Okay, I think we've got to like go for queen h5 and hope for the best. So I'm just gonna go for the check. Spending a lot of time on this, but just because it's like super critical position, which could be like game changer, so. He's got obviously only move here because king e7 is getting mated on f7 and yeah, I think trick is just to take. He's got like queen g5 now, I believe, maybe best, not sure. Could also take the knight, I think, even though it looks kind of scary, I think that's playable. And I think we're going for dispositions that I was like thinking about. After takes and knight ag8, he plays bishop d7. Yep. Okay, so there's a line. Bishop e2. And bishop ag8, rook g1. Could also maybe cast along and then play rook g1. I think that's actually trickier. Yeah, I think this might be very clever. And now this is huge threat. And then... If he moves the knight, this is gonna be a problem. And if bishop f6, I think we've got h4. Yeah. Just h4, I think, and we go rook g8 pretty much. Yeah, on the next move. I think that looks winning. I'm probably just like getting super lucky with this. And just messed up the fury, thinking that <laughs> it's a line I've seen, but. <laughs> It was something completely different. But now I think we have actually got this one. I'm curious though in that line after knight g6, what if pawn takes on g6? I think we have to take the rook. And if we like count pieces, you've got like a rook for two minors, but with like queen zone and maybe he's got like a weak king that compensates. So I don't know. Just gonna be taking the piece and could also take this one, it's like pretty tempting, but then it's gonna be having a weak pawn, so just be collecting the bishop and 
This is under attack. Gonna take knight. Not that the knight is <laughs> such an impressive piece now, but uh, I think it's sort of a good idea to trade. I'll start with rook h1 though, just like hitting the pawn and forcing rook h8 pretty much. Just gonna be taking and only playing like f4, fixing everything. And simple idea to just like double and win the h7 pawn. Yeah, just rook d2, bringing the rook over, collecting the pawn on h7, and it's not really much black can do about it. If he tries c5, just blocking everything with c3. Actually, could also take just like hitting the bishop, just better, hitting this guy, and yeah, can just like start collecting even more stuff. Could also just push the pawn. I think we're just going for the pawn push. Uh, yeah. Just gonna be taking, and then g7 is like unstoppable. And we end up, uh, yeah, getting the win. And we get a white pieces once again. Um, I think we're just gonna be playing d4 and then uh, heading right for the jump of a London with knight c3 and then bishop to f4. He goes with e6, and in case of bishop d6, I think I'm gonna be trying out uh, e3. Does go for the fianchetto. And we get into a bit of a like strange fianchetto, I would say, in this move order. Could definitely play in the center with e4, could also play queen e2 castle long, could also just play e3. I think we're really like gonna be using this kind of Jabava London ideas with h4 against the fianchetto though, so I think it makes sense to play it here. See whether he allows me to play h5 or not. I think we're gonna go for it when he allows it. Maybe he, he wants g5. I think I got a bit tricked. Shouldn't have rushed with it, perhaps. I think that was a mistake. Pretty terrible one that I did. Should have just played maybe like the waiting e3 move. Something, something. Forgot about g5 for a second and he's punishing me for it. Trying to understand whether it makes sense to play bishop e5 or not. I think it kind of does because we're like trying to trade off his fianchetto bishop and knight of six I think is like a terrible move because it allows h6. It's not like losing material just yet but it's just like super ugly positionally and I think we have a choice between either e3, queen f3 or queen e4 playing more direct. Um, Something like that. I think we're just gonna be playing the sort of, um, yeah, slower approach, just going e3. Because knight c6, I think I wanna like keep my bishop on e5, so I'm just gonna be trading this knight with uh, bishop b5. And I could definitely increase the pressure on the knight with queen f3, he will have like the only move bishop b7. But another way I'm thinking to do that is by bringing this knight all the way to the h5 square. Just, uh, yeah, putting pressure on this knight. That's a bit of a, like, longer route, <laughs> I know, but I don't think he has a lot to do about it. So I think we're just going for the slow positional play, just getting the knight to, like, h5. Bishop e7, as expected, just knight g3. Again, if he castles, I think it's gonna be like a pretty weak king. And he's also like kind of struggling to unpin. So he's like trying to castle now, but I can actually play queen f3. And he's gonna have like a big question of how to deal with, uh, you know, that pressure against the knight and the rook. Another way to do so might be knight h5. That is correct. And then if like the knight takes, we can actually pick up the rook, be up the exchange. I'm like trying to evaluate whether it's like better to play queen f3. Uh, and then knight h5, just trying to like figure out the small details. Yeah, I think we might just keep it super simple, play knight h5. I mean, if he's giving us the exchange, we're gonna be taking it. Don't need to go like super complex on this. If he plays queen d8, that's like a big achievement because we have stopped him and also he can like follow it up with queen f3 winning the exchange nevertheless. So yeah, I think knight h5 is just like crashing. So opponent just takes on h5, I think as expected, and I could take with a queen, but then he can like run away with the rook, so we don't want that, we're just gonna be taking the rook, he's gonna be going knight back, and then perhaps just uh, play queen f3 harassing the knight, 
could also just take it and play that position where we are up the exchange. That is also like uh, perfectly doable. Another cheeky idea that I came up with, I think he's just like taking and then I don't see a way for him to defend the h7 pawn and this little guy here on h6 might be looking for it to uh, yeah, get a new queen basically. Try to come up with uh, a nice word game, but <laughs> don't really expect that on this stream. So um, e5, I think that's sort of a good idea in a way that he's trying to open up the position for the bishop pair, but it shouldn't really, um, yeah, change the objective evaluation of the position. So I think you can just like simply castle, defending the pawn on d4. Ed, yeah, we just like take with a pawn. Uh, okay, opponent might have tricked me. What is going on? I think I'm getting my queen trapped. Oh no. How are we? gonna get away from this <laughs> jesus okay i think i have g4 but definitely getting a bit out of hand at least yeah like g4 and he can't take the pawn because of f7 dropping strike queen d6 but i think we have the check and then take one d5 that was close <laughs> okay can actually take the pawn on f7 as well uh so yeah i think just taking is fine no reason not to take, right? Bishop e8, queen g8 is just like winning straight up. It's like tricky with that queen, but it should be a win. If he had played rook g8, I had queen d3, so maybe it was better, but still lost, I think. So bishop e8, I think can definitely maybe take one d5 and still have a winning position. Because of the passed pawn, but I think queen g8 is like simplest. Then like bishop h5, then take one d5 and his bishop will be hanging at the end. And also if he just plays bishop c6, I think you can play queen g6 and then bring the queen that way. It's like kind of tricky. Queen can get trapped, but I don't think it gets. So if it doesn't, then it just works. Uh, opponent plays bishop to d7, hitting my queen. But this time, I think can actually just uh, grab that pawn on d5 because it's interrupting the yeah rook's path. And we can just take it. He can take, take on g4, but then just take the bishop on f6. He can take on g4 immediately. We're going to be trading queens, play like rook g1, followed by h7 with just winning position. So at this point, it's... Pretty much a free win, just like trade queens, bring this rook towards like g1. Could also like sack the exchange with 94. Anything wins at this point, position is just like so good. Um, yeah, it's hard to mess it up. Actually, rook g1, bishop f3, it is winning, but maybe not so simple to make progress. Some of you may argue, and maybe from that perspective just like taking is better bishop d1 just take it with a king bishop will be under attack it has to stay passive we take another pawn and it's better to be like up three pawns with easy play than be up an exchange with a blocked position i would say he's not even taking the exchange mm, yeah i'm still gonna give him the exchange i don't really mind it just gonna be taking the pawn taking it with a king this is kind of a threat if rook f8, just f4, and we've got like a completely winning position, being up like three pawns, actually maybe even four, I lost the count, I think we're up four pawns in this position, <laughs> and yeah, he's just like super passive. Okay, I think we start like c4, taking control over d5, and then just like bring the king over, just playing it super slow. Again, like, no need to actually, like, rush with us. Because b5, I guess we're going to be taking another one. If uh, rook b8, just knight f7. I think that's the plan. Place d5. Uh, yeah, just king d2. Idea to, like, activate maybe using the c file. Yeah, just going to do that. Rook c6, big flat. Against rook f6, yeah, we can simply go for the trade. It's, like, completely winning. 
could also win this pawn. I guess we're just going to be taking another pawn. <laughs> Feeling greedy. Uh, yeah, taking the pawn. Debating if take this one. We have this check and also like that one. Which fork do you guys want? I think I'm going to be using this one. Even though might be getting to some stalemate. So I was about to give the rook check. But anyways, with like got the win. Thanks a lot for making it this far into the video. And if you're looking for more content, make sure to check out uh, some of the previous episodes from the same series.